Have you ever gone backpacking and loved every second of it except sleeping at night? You're warm, you're happy, but you're just not comfortable. One big reason could be your sleeping pad. I have slept on a lot of sleeping pads, some awesome and some less awesome. The good news is I've got three sleeping pads to share with you that range from budget friendly to claim you got it on sale expensive. Okay, that was a bit dramatic. Ow! That was a bit dramatic. $150 isn't actually that much for a sleeping pad, but I'm cheap, so $150 felt like a lot. The point is, all of these sleeping pads are super comfortable, but it is good to know what each is best suited for and is not suited for. I bought all three of these pads with my own money and have used them on many, many backpacking trips. Let me tell you what I think makes each of these sleeping pads awesome. First up, the Trekology UL80. This pad is budget friendly. And by the way, can we knock off this nonsense of calling $150 sleeping pads and $200 quilts or bags budget friendly? I watched a video the other day that literally claimed a $200 bag was the budget friendly option. Nonsense. That's not my definition of budget friendly. The Trichology UL80 is truly budget friendly at just $40 on Amazon. I probably have more nights, no, I definitely have more nights on this pad than any other that I own. It has been my pad of choice even over more expensive options many, many times because it's just so dang comfortable. How do they do that? First, this baby is four inches thick. Thinner sleeping pads are a pain because you can often feel the ground beneath you, especially on your hip and your shoulder if you're a side sleeper. But that never happens to me with this pad. Even at 200 pounds and sleeping on my side, I don't feel the ground underneath my hip or shoulder. The thickness really provides a ton of comfort. It's also 75 inches tall and almost 23 inches wide. As someone who's six feet tall with a wider build, I really appreciate the real estate that this pad provides. The pad also dips down a little bit in the middle, so it really feels like it sort of cradles you when you're laying on it. I also appreciate that the 40D nylon that Trekology uses doesn't have as plastic of a feel as many other sleeping pads. That's great because this is often my summer pad with a quilt, meaning my skin is often in direct contact with the pad. But unlike other sleeping pads, this one doesn't feel like I'm sleeping on a big balloon. While budget pads often come with a significant weight penalty, this one is a very reasonable 26.5 ounces. On my scale, it shows us 25 ounces or 718 grams. The comfort to weight ratio is so good that this is the pad I took on my 100 mile through hike. For late spring, summer, and early fall backpacking trips, I honestly do not think you can do any better on a budget than the Trekology UL80. Now, I wouldn't recommend using it outside of those time frames because the estimated R value is only about 1.6 to 2. Estimated what? R value. I promise I won't bore you with too much detail about it. The important thing to know is that R value is a measure of how well the pad insulates your warm body from the cold ground underneath it insulation in our houses actually uses the same measurement. This chart, taken from an excellent article by Thermarest that I'll link in the description below, shows recommended R values for different seasons. I want to stress that these are just guidelines. It will depend a lot on how you sleep. If you're a warm sleeper like I am, you can often use a slightly lower R value pad than it shows in this or other charts. And if you're a cold sleeper, you will definitely want to go for a higher R value pad when in doubt, I think it's always better to go with a higher R value pad. It's amazing how much heat the cold ground can suck out of you if your pad doesn't have the right amount of insulation for your trip. The reason the Trekology's estimated R value is so low is that it likely doesn't have any insulation. Basically, all that's insulating you from the ground is the 40D nylon fabric and the air that it contains. Not very much insulation for a cold trip, but for summer, it's perfect. We'll come back to our value in a minute when we talk about the other two pads. For inflating the pad, it's got this nice two-way valve so you don't lose any air while you're trying to blow it up. And if you want to dump air quickly, just open it like this. Just make sure you don't do that on accident where you're trying to open up the valve to inflate it. I've done that before. As far as where to get the Trekology UL80, you can get it on Amazon for about $40. I'll include a link to that in the pinned comment and description below. I paid $40 for mine several years ago and it's still the same price today. $40 is well worth. 
the comfort you will get from the Trekology UL80. And I feel confident saying that because as I said, I have more nights on this pad than any other that I own. The pad that I have the second most nights on is the next pad we're talking about, the Priya Recharge XL. The Priya will cost you quite a bit more than the Trekology at $99, but it also has more to offer. Let's cover the ways that it's similar to the Trekology first. It's four inches thick, which we know we like. It's 76 inches tall and 23 inches wide, which is just a hair longer and wider than the Trekology. It also comes in at about 26 ounces or just over 730 grams. And although it's not a deal breaker, the Perea Recharge XL does not have that nice same curved design as the Trekology. I personally don't think that these horizontal baffles are as comfortable as that Trekology design, but they're not too bad. It's also made of 40D nylon, but I found it to be a little more plasticky feeling and slicker than the Trekology. That means if I'm in a sleeping bag and have pitched on a slight incline, I sometimes find myself sliding down the pad in the middle of the night, as happens with a lot of pads. As for the slightly more plasticky feel, that honestly doesn't bother me too much with this pad because I tend to use it in colder weather where I have full length base layers on. And that's because the estimated R value on this pad is 4.7. Now I want to stress that this is an estimated R value and I would honestly guess that it isn't quite that high. They say estimated R value because in order to have an official ATSM rated R value, you have to subject your pad to very specific tests by a third party. Priya says they haven't done it, but they give their best estimates. All that said, I have taken this pad well below freezing. There have been some nights where I was a little chilly and wished I'd had my Thermarest Z-Lite to boost the R value of my sleep system. But honestly, if the forecast is even a little bit below zero, I am absolutely comfortable taking the Priya Recharge XL. It's light, it's warm, and it's comfortable. Your experience may be a little bit different based on how warm you sleep. The last thing I'll mention about this pad is that I don't love the valve on it. It's a simpler valve that just has this flap that's supposed to push itself closed if you're not inflating it, or if you need to release air, you move this little flap out of the way. Sometimes it gets stuck in the open position, or and sometimes it's hard to get into the open position. You also can't dump air as quickly as the Trekology. If you want to, you have to pull the flap up. And it takes a little longer to deflate than the Trekology does. The first Priya Recharge XL that I had, this flap stopped working when it got cold outside. So when it was cold, the flap would actually get stuck in the open position like that, which made it really hard to inflate because air would escape when you were trying to inflate the pad. But I contacted Priya Customer Service and they sent me a new pad, no questions asked. Excellent customer service. You can also only buy this pad directly from Priya on their website. I'll include a link to this pad as well in the pinned comment and the description below. Don't worry, they have free shipping for all US orders. Unfortunately, I don't know what their international shipping is like. For $100, it is a fantastic pad. I've had it for several years and love it. But we still have one more pad to talk about. The Big Agnes Rapide SL Insulated. This is my most recent and expensive sleeping pad purchase. And I will tell you right now that I love it. It's got that same thickness that we love at 4.25 inches on the sides and comes in a variety of lengths and widths. I went for the 72 inches tall and 20 inches wide version because I was trying to save a little bit of weight. I honestly wish that I had got the longer version at 78 inches tall because if I'm laying on my stomach, I can sometimes feel my feet hanging off the edge of the pad or every once in a while I end up pushing my pillow off the top of my pad, which is a little bit annoying. The nice thing is it comes in a variety of sizes. If you get the tall version, it won't cost you any extra and you'll get an additional six inches in height. So if you like it long and wide, go for the tall and or wide version. Unlike the Perea, the Big Agnes does have that nice curved design. These chambers on the outside of the pad are 4.25 inches, while the chambers on the inside of the pad are about three and three quarters. So you still get that nice cradling effect with the outsides a little bit higher than the middle. I looked for quite a while to try to find out what the weight of the nylon is that Big Agnes uses in this pad. All they say is that it's a super light, durable nylon. I will say it feels a little bit less heavyweight than the Priya or the Trekology, so I would guess maybe it's a 20D nylon, but it still feels plenty durable for anything I'll use it for. The next thing I wanna point out is this nice quilted top. You probably noticed on the Trekology and the Priya that it's more of a horizontal baffling system, but the Big Agnes has this super comfortable quilted top that honestly makes it the most comfortable pad I think I've ever laid on. 
I love it. While I've got you here, I want to quickly tell you about my Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the official Dirt Junkies to help vote on what types of gear items or even specific gear I should buy, review, and then give away to Patreons. Any gear I purchase with Patreon funds will always be given away to Patreon members. Check it out in the link in the pinned comment as well as in the description below. This pad may be sounding similar enough to these other two that you're wondering why I paid more for this one than these two combined. It's a combination of two things. First, the weight. This pad is eight ounces lighter than either of these, coming in at 18 ounces. And second, the R value. This pad has an official ASTM rated R value of 4.8. To get that kind of weight and R value combination for $150 is excellent. They accomplish this higher R value with two layers of reflective film within the pad. I haven't had a chance to take this pad much below freezing yet, but I'm looking forward to when I'll be able to. And I feel comfortable taking the R value at face value because it is an official ASTM rated R value rather than the manufacturer's estimate. The valve on the Big Agnes is a minor detail that sets it apart. There's actually two valves here, one for inflating it and one for deflating. The inflation valve is a two-way valve that actually makes it really easy to make micro adjustments, which is really nice because more than once I've gotten on my sleeping pad, realized I blew it up too much and wished it was just a little softer. With this, you can just let a little bit of air out and it stays closed. It's nice that for dumping air, it's a second valve because that way you don't make the same mistake I have on the Trekology and accidentally opening it up all the way when all you want to do is either make a micro adjustment or inflate it a little bit more. So a minor detail, that's, that's the Big Agnes Repeat SL apart from the other two pads. It's also cool that the Big Agnes comes with an included pump sack that weighs only an additional two ounces or just over 50 grams. It's a nice big pump sack that's really light and it's cool that they include it. You can get a pump sack for either the Trekology or the Perea, but it will cost you extra. You can get a version of the Trekology that includes the pump sack for usually around $47. I'll put a link to that below as well. Or you can buy the pump sack on its own for about $15. For the Priya, you'll also have to buy the pump sack separately from the Priya website. It comes in at about $18. So if you're a fan of the pump sack, the price difference between these pads is not nearly as much as without them. The Priya with the pump sack will cost you about $120. The Big Agnes comes with it and you can get that for $150. Just a $30 difference. Not trying to sway it one way or the other. I think all these pads are awesome. Just something to be aware of if you want the pump sack. And in case you're interested, the Trekology pump sack weighs about five ounces. The Priya pump sack weighs about 2.3. As far as where to get the Big Agnes Repeat SL insulated, you can get it on Amazon as well as REI and several other retailers. I'll include a link to Amazon, REI, and a few other major retailers in the pinned comment and description below. I truly don't think you can go wrong with any of these pads. Let me know which one you would choose. If you're on a budget and still not sold on the Trekology, check out this video right here where I compare four budget pads and tell you why Trekology was my favorite and why the others might be yours. Remember, life is better with some dirt in it.